Here's energy, the raw material of the future. Energy that can be influenced this way or that. Energy that can find its way into a bewildering variety of activities, good or evil. Energy that will shape our future as a country. The development of our ideas, even their survival, depends on it. Now, how is this power and ability latent in our children given its chance to develop in the best possible way? One of the biggest influences meets the child as he comes from the school world and enters the world outside. The society he lives in, a huge, complex structure of haphazard growth and planned development, work and play, rich and poor, sleepy country places, huge industrial areas our society with its faults and its good qualities is one of the molding influences then there's a second major influence the child will grow up influenced by parents and family groups maybe he'll have the streets for a playground or maybe he'll have a garden to share with his school fellows He may come home to an empty house. Or to a real wealth. For good or ill, or more truly, perhaps a mixture of both, this second influence will affect the direction of his life. But there's a third influence, the school. An influence that we can more easily change than the other two. The school can be made to shape better citizens, more alert, more responsible, more fully educated. It can pave the way to a progressively improving society. The school is the key to the future. An Education Act was passed in 1944, which shows that we're aware of this. It provides for a reorganization, an extension of education, a new building program, the raising of the school leaving age, the reduction of numbers in classes, the present senior schools will be replanned as modern secondary schools to provide increased opportunities for a practical approach to many subjects. No, no. You must keep your knees higher. Languages, for instance, will be taught more individually. It is the law. We finish school in July and will start the History will include the study of citizenship. Now, Rita, when you're 21, you'll be able to vote. How many votes will you have? Two local votes. Two local votes, yes. More, yes. A parliamentary vote. Parliamentary vote, yes. Another one? A business vote. A business vote, yes. You never know. You might have a business of your own one of these days. Woodwork will be more practical. So, well, Ronald, how are you going to do this? Well, I said, let's do this and then. And then the Oh, would you like to sit on it when you've done it? <coughs> would you do it, sorry? Now, can you think of a better way? Well, I could clean this joint and fix it on there. Yes, but wouldn't the legs be uneven? Yes, they would. I know. I'll have to put a new bar across. That's better. Well, get your wood from the store. All right. Would you come and have a look at mine, please, sir? Science will deal with everyday problems. Well, are you two going to be first this time? Oh, we're far off it. That was so done, have you? No, no, we don't. Well, let's check over the circuit. And films will become increasingly important. Now, boys, you are going to see another film about a town in India, Darjeeling. Right? Put out the lights, Bob. In junior schools, classes will be smaller. The teacher will have more time to give to each pupil. I want the area of this piece here. Now, has anybody got any ideas on it at all? You have done? No. Measure the big one and find its area. Measure the little one and find its area. And take the little one from the big one. Okay. Now you try and measure the one you have. Nursery schools will be built for the under five with equipment designed for the needs of toddlers and teachers trained in their welfare and development.
hands when they move up to the infant class, they'll begin the rudiments of language and numbers in surroundings not far removed from the nursery. This is the kind of education the new act aims at, but it can't be achieved without a great many more teachers. Now, how are they to be found and trained? Schools. Many thousands of teachers are needed to learn the new scheme. But fortunately, there are tens of thousands of people who are now beginning to think of post-war jobs. And the purpose of these films is to draw their attention to teaching. As well as the normal method of entry into the profession, the two years course at the training college and the four-year university course, there is now an emergency one-year course devised specially for their benefit. It is open to all people between the ages of 21 and 35. And the successful one-year trainee will rank as a fully certificated teacher after two years of teaching, combined with continuation study. It is hoped that this scheme will attract men and women from the services and from civil wartime jobs, whose maturity, fuller experience of life, and wider knowledge will compensate both for their lack of formal education and the shorter period of training. Let's see what happens when someone with the necessary national service qualification decides to have a go at this emergency scheme. He gets a form to fill in. They want to know his age, what sort of education he's had, uh, what he's been doing since he left school. Well, his age is anything between 21 and 35. He's had the same education as the rest of us, and he's been doing everything under the sun since he left school. In other words, he's all of us or any of us. Let's call him X. Well, what does X do now? If he's considered a likely candidate, from the information he's supplied, he goes along to an interview. Here he meets a panel of experts. They want to find out that more intangible quality, his character. What kind of a fellow is X? He's a sailor who sailed the seven seas and can bring a colorful experience of half the countries of the world to the children he'll teach. A girl who learned to look after other people's children while the parents worked in war factories. A unit education officer who has already grappled with some of the problems of education. Or a home front worker who gave his spare time to youth welfare. He's a man who's continued his studies under one of the forces training schemes. A girl who has shown her organizing ability in a responsible operational job. He's someone whose war job has given him a chance to prove his capacity for leadership. Someone who has shown his interest in current affairs and his ability to express his ideas in a forces brains trust or discussion group. Anyone who has learned how to pass on some technical skill and knowledge to others. 